Oh, it says double hi, but even though the computer is not showing it. So, hi, I am Vicki Draper, author, certified healer, and animal communicator. And this is um, an interview with Jody Hopkins and Lucy, her wonderful, beautiful dog, and hearing their words of wisdom after reading my book, Bridging True Love Connection and Healing Between You and Your Animals. So if you haven't read it, you can get the cliff notes here, live from Jody and how uh, the techniques helped uh, Lucy and her have a whole new relationship. And, um, and her, like I said, cliff notes and takeaways. So um, excited to have you here, Jody. Thank you. Good to be here. So, yeah, share with me what was life like with Lucy, what issues you were having, and kind of what, you know, what led up to you getting the book. Little background. Okay. Um, Lucy is currently eight years old, and I got her, I rescued her about a year and a half ago. Um, and I now say we rescued each other because I had just retired and moved from Austria back to the United States. So I was needing a little bit of, you know, humor and, and a little bit of comic relief in my life. So I thought, you know what, this would be good for me. And I, we'd had dogs growing up, but they were never my dog. They were never my responsibility. I never trained them. I never did any of that. And so this was really my first experience with having a dog. And so she came in and she, I, you know, loved her from the moment I saw her. She had been part of a rescue that the Colorado, um, a Colorado organization did after a hurricane in Texas. And Texas had a overflow of animals and she'd been found wandering around Chinatown in Houston and um, nobody claimed her. So they brought her to Colorado and I found her and she was just exactly what I wanted. She's a little Chihuahua Corgi mix. And she was seven years old, no history about her at all. And so knowing that I would have no background about her behavior or any of that, I got to, to chat with the foster mom and she said, oh no, she's great. She doesn't bark. She doesn't do any of that. She's just really playful and fun and she's great. Well, I had her home about three days and she started barking and it was nonstop forever and ever. Um, she would get up in the, on the back of my couch in the front window and I live on a fairly, not busy by vehicle traffic, but foot traffic. And so she would bark and bark and bark. Well, I put up with that for about a year and I was to the place that um, I truly, I had told somebody, I don't know how much longer I can take this. My heart says giving her back or finding a new home is the wrong thing, but I don't, I can't, I don't know what else to do. I can't live life like this. And so it was about that time that I'd heard about you and your book. And so um, you had a, a little um, online class and you said, okay, so tell me about your dog. And I told you, and you said, you need to get the book, read the book. And I'd heard of it. So I thought, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And I read that book like in a weekend and it turned out that, um, I, which is not like me, but I read every chapter and did the little exercises at the end. And that's not like me. I'm usually one of those, I'll oh, skip the exercises. Let's just <laughs> go to the, to the reading. But I really think that it was the exercises that really made the, a, a huge difference in how it worked. Um, so that was what was going on at the very beginning and, and why I got the book. And, and there were other behaviors, not listening and not following commands and that kind of stuff. So that was the start. And that was how I got the book. All righty. Well, so getting the book and working with the exercises, how, what is your life like now with Lucy or what Lucy's life and yours? Well, it was really fun because with, uh, within a few days of starting doing the exercises, um, I felt a sudden shift. I knew that there was something different and I had uh, people who knew a lot more about animals than I did come and take a look at us because I knew it wasn't just Lucy that had the problem. It was both Lucy and I, and there was something in the way I interacted with her or, or whatever. And I had worked for years with 
emotionally disturbed children. So it was just really troubling to me that I could make emotionally disturbed children be fine, but I couldn't do anything with Lucy. And one of the things that the first things I got through my head when I started the book was Lucy's not a kid, she's a dog and they think and do and behave differently. And so you have to get to know them and their needs before you can just put this blanket description of she's a dog and I'm gonna do this. So um, yeah, that was that I think that was the huge thing. And I think just recognizing that she was a dog and it, and that they don't hold grudges and they don't have memories of, you know, stupid things you do or say, and those kinds of things relieved a lot of my anxiety, which therefore was good for hers. <laughs> yeah. So um, how was the barking now? The barking's much better. I a um, couple things happened. One was that I found out she was a dog and not a human. And the other thing was that at the one of the very first chapters there, and what I did with you was a grounding exercise where um, we did a meditation and she just came and sat with me and she happened to be on my lap. I was sitting in the recliner and she was on my lap. And so I listened to this and we did the this grounding activity and I could feel myself relaxing and grounding. And all of a sudden I realized that I could feel her doing it too. It was like, she, I could feel her body relaxing in a way that it hadn't before. And then reading something else in the book, it was like, if they do this and this and this, then they really are attached and they love you and um, they're committed to, to keeping you safe and all of that. And I realized that the barking was about keeping me safe and protecting me and, um, and all of that. And so um, I realized that I had not taken on the role as the leader, the, the alpha dog, so that that was something we had to get through. But I think doing that, um, the grounding exercise, and then probably the other thing that made the hugest difference and still does is that you said something in the book about don't say no, don't stop, because if you do that, they know not to do what you're doing, but that doesn't meet their need. Whatever they're barking, why they're barking or why they're crying or why they're scratching or why they're doing whatever, um, you don't get to the bottom of it just by saying no. And for me, it was just like what I used to do with the kids, that it's all, all behavior is communication. And unless you, they can communicate in some way and you teach them how to do that, then it doesn't do any good. So your lesson was give them the replacement behaviors. Instead of saying no, say don't jump or stop jumping or stay down or whatever. So hers happens to be stay down and I have to say it once and that's it. And she knows. And um, I decided that it was my problem because I have this great big picture window and it looked right out onto the street. So she, of course, looked out every day. And so I put a curtain up in front of that window and now she doesn't see the foot traffic go by and she's very happy laying around the house doing whatever she does and, and doesn't bark nearly as much. So, and, and we'll stop if I, we have now instead of stop or no, it's um, that's enough. And all that's all I have to say and she stops. So it's night and day. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give her away now for anything. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, share her little picture with us here. Oh, yes. She's I, not, she's off napping. So yes, she's off napping. Picture. I tried to get her to come with me and sit here, but that wasn't happening. Um, she is a bit of a diva. Where did it go? I had it right here. She's a bit of a diva and has her, you know, kind of a little old lady and she's got her schedule. So, um, but I'll hold, let's see, how do I do this? There we go. Yeah, there um, she is. So the glare doesn't hit, but yeah. anyway, she is absolutely adorable. Um, she's tons of fun. She's a really good little girl. She likes to take rides. She, lo she loves to go for a walk, but she likes to go in the car. So every couple of days through the pandemic, she's been she'll come to me and it was this new kind of a whine cry thing and i you know do you want a treat you want i tried to figure it out couldn't figure it out and one day i grabbed my car keys and my purse and i was going to go somewhere and she went 
just crazy. I was like, what, you want to go with me? And it was like, she was saying, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so now about every other day we get in the car and go for a ride and, and she's perfectly happy. And so, yeah, we've learned how to communicate and we've learned how to, how to do that. And, and I've learned to stay calmer and to, um, you know, to try and, and communicate in a way that'll be understandable, but yet calm and, and uh, meaningful for her and and you know as a result she does the same for me she's finding ways to communicate what she needs and what she wants and and has been a lot more attentive and and you know cuddles now i woke up the other night and she was laying on next to me in the bed with her head i had my arm stretched out and she had her head on my arm so we must be doing something right <laughs> all right well that's the title, I don't think I said the title at the beginning, which is Bridging True Love Connection and Healing yeah. between you and your animal. And so it sounds like um, that's what that did for Lucy and you. It really did. And I, I mean, I had talked to other people and, you know, they were giving me all the things about, you know, say it once and then say, you know, use a collar and use a leash and use a this and use a that. And, it just for some reason didn't work for me, but it was it was your approach with that that concept of bridging the, the relationship and and bridging those feelings that you know this could work for both of us, Lucy. So let's you know let's find out what you need, and what I need, and we can make this work. And it it happened very quickly. I was very surprised because I thought she was going to be the problem child in class, and I didn't think she was going to respond as well as she did but literally within a few days she was different nice. she'd probably tell you i was the one who was different but <laughs> <laughs> well it works both ways yeah you, you exactly. changed and she changed at the same time <laughs> exactly so um thank you i'm so delighted that um that my book had such a great impact on lucy's in your life it really did. And I really, I know you said at the beginning, you, you'll get the cliff notes, you won't need the book, but you need the book. That's, <laughs> I'm not doing it justice. It really is. It's a, it's a fun, easy read, lots of fun stories about other dogs and, and pets and, and their people. And I think it really, it made a world of difference. And I, I've now gifted it to, I don't know how many people. And so I really encourage people to get it because it it made such a huge difference. Great, awesome. And so you are an author, and so I would love for you to um, share your the title of your book and a little Me? bit about that. Well, um, my book is called Journey for One: A Guide to Gaining the Courage and Skills You Need to Travel Solo. And it came about because I spent 12 years living overseas in Europe. I lived in Austria for 12 years. And um, one of the things is that because everything is a lot more accessible from Vienna than it is from Denver or Seattle or wherever anybody happens to be, that you travel a lot. And I didn't always have friends who um, were as... Uh, carefree as I was and had the finances that I was fortunate to be earning at the time. And so I would just say, you know, I, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go by myself. I'll just, I want, I'd rather go by myself than, than not go. And so I started traveling and realized that I just loved it. And I had traveled on my own for business um, before and actually started traveling alone because my boss called me into his office one day after I'd gotten a new job and he said, okay, you've been here three days. You still okay with it? And I said, oh yeah, loving it. And he said, well, good. Cause you're going to St. Louis for a conference next week. And it was like, and in my head, that's all I heard because I had never stayed in a hotel before by myself. I had never eaten in a restaurant by myself. So I knew I had less than a week to get myself ready for this emotionally and figured like any teacher, you break it down in smaller steps and build on success and you'll be fine. So I started out by going into like fast food places by myself and skipping the drive-through. And then it was go to a movie by myself. 
and realizing that I wasn't the only one that was there alone and that it's dark in there. Nobody's paying attention to whether you're alone or not. And um, ended up my graduation ceremony was spending the night in a hotel about an hour away from home uh, by this little lake up in the mountains. And I figured that way, if I got too scared or things went too crazy, all I had to do was jump in the car and drive home. Um, I worry sometimes when I read online about people who are saying, oh, I leave in a week for three months in Bali. It's my first trip alone. And I, it, it's yeah. like, yeah, no, um, that's, you know, no. <laughs> and so it's like drinking tequila shots the first time you ever drink <laughs> alcohol. Not a good idea. And uh, so anyway, I just, I had so many people ask me about, you know, how did you learn to do that? How did you get comfortable with that? So I wrote Journey for One. Um, and it, it's a workbook kind of book and goes through and says, first do this. And it's about planning and it's about being prepared. And it's about, you know, taking away the fear factor because you plan ahead and you say, what's the worst thing that could happen? Okay, well, if that's the worst thing that could happen, let's plan ahead for that. So there are chapters on medical emergencies, on not speaking the language, about dealing with family and friends who are less than enthusiastic. There are how, how to get along and things to do if you don't want to be alone, but you don't want to be part of a group either, and ways to meet people. And, and then each chapter has a story about um, some trip that I've had or lesson that I learned, some are other people, but it all goes along with the theme and it's a book you write in and you, you know, it builds on your strengths. So it was a lot of fun to write. Uh, a lot of people have told me that they, they, it really is nice. And, and I told somebody the other day, this book was made for COVID because we can't <laughs> actually travel. So if you have the book now, you can do all the writing in the workbook and going through it and reading the stories now. And by the time you get to the end of the book, you'll have your plan in place. And when things open up, you'll be ready to go. So <laughs> it, that. yeah, so it was a fun journey. It was fun to do. And uh, I'm really excited for people to be able to do it. If I can find just one person who benefits from it and says, you know what, I can do this, then I'm happy. I'm my mission is fulfilled. <laughs> awesome. And they find that on Amazon? It is on Amazon, Journey for One. Um, and it, has, it comes in um, paperback and Kindle. And if you prefer a autographed copy, I can do that. Uh, I can mail one to you. If you go on my website, which is journeyforonego.org. And if you do that, oh, wait, I'm sorry, journeyforone.org. You can do that and go on there and there's a place to order the book and, and use PayPal or credit card or whatever. And um, yeah, and I'd be happy to autograph one and then send it to you in the snail mail. And so. All right. Yeah. Awesome. It's, it has been quite, as you know, it's quite an experience to write that first book and, and to go through the process and then watch it. I told somebody it took me nine months to write it. I felt like I'd given birth. You know, I was so, <laughs> excited, so. Yeah, it is its own journey. <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. All righty. So um, is there a golden nugget or a takeaway for the book bridging true love connection and healing between you and your animals that uh, you would like to leave our uh, listeners with i think um the golden nugget in there for me was um the message that from the very beginning that it's going to be okay this you know it's not and and it, this is this is as much about you healing as it is your pet and that everybody is stressed and when things like this are going on and that just reading it was so reassuring and so empowering and spoke in such a way about the, your pet and you that there's no way that you'd come out any other way it just was um, yeah, I wish there was a book like that for, for 
couples, human couples, but, <laughs> um, but it just, it really was just, you know, to give yourself a break. It's not, um, it's not anything that you can do and that you have no way of knowing what their past is and what their, their hurts and traumas may be or what their needs are. And, and, you know, like I recognized really early, she had tremendous separation anxiety. So I had to be very careful and be aware of that. And, and I think that every time I'd look at the book or I'd look at Lucy, I would know that, you know, just needed some patience and needed to keep working through it and trust the process. So that's, that's what probably the nugget I got that may, would make it, if nothing else, worth picking up. Awesome. And so to get my book, Bridging True Love Connection and Healing Between You and Your Animals, I invite you to go to www.healingyouranimal.com. That's www.h-e-a-l-i-n-g-y-o-u-r-a-n-i-m-a-l.com. All right. Well, thank you, Jody. This has been a lot of fun. Yes, thank you, Vicki. It was fun to come on and and uh, share my Lucy and I's success. And, and I thank you for the little plug for my book. That was very kind. Well, yes, and uh, happy to do that because uh, I have not traveled as much because of being solo. And so mm -hmm. it's an inspiration to shift that because I love traveling and- um... That's right. It's, it's, a, it's a whole new experience. I, I really love it. I really do. It's not for everybody and I don't want to travel alone every time, but when I do, I go and it, it's so much better than, than you ever dream it's going to be. Yeah. I, I'm going to encourage you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So listeners and viewers, yes. Um, Journey for One and Bridging True Love Connection and Healing Between You and Your Animals, Two Good Reads for you that helped change your life. Absolutely. All right.